Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Wa Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa Ulul Amri minkum And always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qiraajisu Da'eefu, Miskeenu, Zalim, Jihad and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah the holy month of Zul Hijat, the month of Hajj, 10 holiest days to be in worshipness, blessed, dressed, that Allah complete His favour upon our hijrah, our movement from Muharram into the holy month of Zul Hijab, Zul Hajj to be dressed by this immense blessings, immense lights, immense realities. And that in this way of marifa is from 1 to 12 hijabs and this is the 12th hijab in our first movement in our regular life, in our regular understanding Surat al-Yusuf is a dress and the dress of that reality to dress upon us and then from the level of awliyaullah it becomes through the power of nine. So that in their way of marifa they worm, they move through instead of one and Surah Fatiha they are moving through the secret of Surat al-Fatiha on the first month which they move through Surat al-Tawbah all the way to the twelfth hijab and the twelfth month Surat al-Kawthar, nine times twelve is 108 and the immense realities of 108 and that in abjad is haq, ha and qaf, ha is eight, qaf is 100 and that the haq and reaching to the haq to be dressed by the haq has to do with the secrets of the kawthar that Allah in this movement and pilgrimage that is continuous is a circle every beginning has an ending and every ending has a new beginning, is a continuous cycle of movement towards Divine realities. And in the first stages we move through the secret of Surah Fatiha, that Allah dress us from Surah Fatiha all the way to the twelfth month is then Surah Al-Yusuf that Allah describes a beatific qissa, it's such a beatific story for our way of marifa, alif, lam, ra and that Allah unlock on this journey the realities of rububiyya, of lordship. And this surah becomes a key to the understanding of who is your Lord. And Prophet came for us to give to us who knows himself will know his Lord. Lord, not that they'll know Allah right away but that which governs you. And Lordship has to do with what governs us, what is a master to us. So Surah so Yusuf is describing that Allah's dialogue between Sayyidina Yusuf, his Malik and King whom he's a servant to and that Allah And this is in reference to who his Lord is and his servanthood to the King whom purchased him and not to betray your master to reach towards these realities. So unlocks for the Salik, the traveller on this reality the immense realities of Lordship and that Prophet's hadith comes to give to us that who knows himself will know his Lord, knows what governs him before he can claim that he submits to the Creator Most High is that this spiritual path is what do you really submit to? Look to all that which governs you in life and stops you from true submission. And that becomes the first step in our analysis of ourself that, Ya Rabbi I'm asking to move towards your realities. And Surat Yusuf comes to us to teach us 
then look to yourself and see what governs you. Before we can claim that I'm submitting to Allah no I'm submitting to my desires. I submit to my vices, my wants, I submit to my computer, my games. Before I can submit to Allah I have to recognize what am I really submitting to. Those have to be fought, those have to be conquered, those have to be understood so that true servanthood can be accomplished. Means then in this beatific surah Allah is giving an immense reality for the tariqahs that we start just a quick analysis because we want at this year to go into the reality of Arafah all instead of the ending towards the end at Hajj we'll go from the back forward so that people don't miss the immense realities of Qurban, the immense realities of what Allah has given to us to accomplish. Means that in Surah Yusuf Allah is giving to us the story of Sayyidina Yusuf that a beatific child from Sayyidina Yaqub a Prophet of Allah in which has 11 brothers whom are Prophets and his beatific reality and angelic soul led him to be favoured by his father and his brothers to be jealous. Means every step of the way for those whom are on the path this is especially important surah because it gives to us an understanding that even your father's a prophet which nobody can claim and your brothers are all prophets there exists jealousy. Means his brothers were jealous of him, didn't like the status of his being favoured by his father so then jealousy exists. If it exists within the family of a prophet imagine within the family of a tariqah, within the family of a Muslim community, within the family of humanity. The jealousy no matter the rank or who you think the person is, oh this is a big shaykh, is very capable of being jealous because the eleven prophets were jealous and they wanted to kill their, their brother and prophets are mazloom. So may Allah is giving for those whom contemplate in their life, be careful, shaitan is real and has access to everyone and he can make anyone fall. If they, if they think they're unfallible, they are fallible and they can fall, beginning. As a result of this difficulty Sayyidina Yusuf is describing to his father, I had a dream Baba in which the sun and the moon and eleven planets made sujood to me. And he said, don't tell your brothers they're going to become even more jealous of it. You just keep this secret to yourself. As time went on the brothers became jealous, not tolerating, took him and threw him into a well. As a result of the well like a child left him to die. Means then our path is that Allah's, Allah will throw us in a well. Means it's not necessarily a path of your choice that you come with all your, your senses and that you consciously make an effort that I'm going to follow these but many have fallen into it, not followed into it. That they had no choice but Allah through them that you're going to be placed in hardship and the one who comes is one whom is responsible for you. As he was thrown into the well a trade caravan came and they looked down there's somebody in here, oh it's a young a Nurani filled with light child, let's take this one perchance we can sell him and have benefit. Means then the one whom Allah puts into a difficulty Allah will send 
a guidance to retrieve that person in difficulty. Means everything on Surat Yusuf is an immense analogy and we're trying to sum it up in few minutes for understanding. That you're thrown into a well, he's crying and in difficulty, left the guidance of his father whom's immense Prophet of Allah and a random caravan comes to retrieve him. That there is nothing of a coincidence. Allah had a station for Sayyidina Yusuf that had nothing to do with his father guiding him and that his taslim and submission was to be cast into this difficulty and wait for guidance to appear. And the caravan that took him, took him at a state of asir, captive, means one, he's losing his will. He's not willfully choosing to go out into guidance because people don't understand like, oh like why is tariqah like this, why is it like… Because Allah is giving it in Qur'an but nobody is stopping to read slowly to understand. When Allah wanted why He didn't just get up, leave His father and start walking into the desert. Because Allah is describing for us it doesn't work that way. He was cast into a difficulty grabbed and tried to be killed by his brothers who are Prophets of Allah thrown into a dark cave in which he smashed his leg when they threw him all the way down. And a random caravan that doesn't seem to be so random is passing by and they retrieve him. Now his journey started in a state of captivity because we said before they feed you these awliya but you have to be yateem. Miskeen and asir, captive, means you lose your ability to choose, this is not a choice of your own. So you, they entered into taslim and the caravan took Sayyidina Yusuf out to a bazaar in which to sell the people they find and the things and goods they find. And Malik al-Aziz, the king of Misr, appears, looks at him and realizes that this may be an immense barakah. And the wife realizes that maybe we can raise him as our own. And they purchase Sayyidina Yusuf Ends up now in the king's house Malik al-Aziz. Why? Because this has in reference to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Azizu Ya Razaq that everything coming to us is by these attributes. Aziz is that we're asking to submit that nothing can escape Allah's Aziz. If Allah grant from His Sifat al-Aziz, I'm giving to you. Not an army on this earth can stop it and not a whole battalion can give it to you. If Allah doesn't grant it and under His Safa that it's not coming to you, nobody can come out to bring it for you. But if Allah grant from it, there's nothing on earth that can stop it because this is the Divine power and Qudra. Malik al-Aziz is now the hint that your journey into this Divine Kingdom this Malik and this king, because this is all of analogy of that king, there's an eternal reality from that story. Means the eternal king of Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad And he's under Sifat al-Aziz for if he requests it, it's finished and it's done. Nothing can stop the request of Prophet because it's coming from the request of Allah Then Malik al-Aziz takes Sayyidina Yusuf into his home to raise and to nurture him. And in the home the wife takes a liking for him, Zulaikha. And she represents for tariqah dunya because now you, you're, you're loved by the king, you're loved by Sayyidina Muhammad 
on this journey. And the dunya loves you, right? Because this dunya loves Sayyidina Muhammad Everything is in submission to Allah So it means that be warned that this kingdom that we're entering into and the, the tariqah's access has immense barakah, immense blessings. Because under that sultanat and the ishq and the love and the service to this king, there's immense amounts of blessings. So Zulaikha takes a liking and begins to come after Sayyidina Yusuf and everyone's familiar with the story. Says that Allah's my creator and your king is my lord, that the Malik, my master, my Rabbuk is my lord and I serve him and I don't do wrong. What you're asking for me is, is not for me. And the teaching was that dunya wouldn't stop, it wants to, it's attracted to that servant, it loves that servant and as a result he understood to turn from it. So he turned his back to Zulaikha to retreat to the door to escape this type of testing. And as a result she grabbed the back of his shirt and ripped it in the process of trying to attack him. At that moment the king entered the door, said, what is this? I brought you into my household, I raised you and what's this situation happening? Means then this love that Allah gives to the turuqs, the immense barakah and blessings that are coming to the turuq, the warning is be careful, don't become attached to the dunya, don't, don't be lost by the, the immense amount of barakahs that are flowing. And at every moment you have to be running from that, not running towards it. Because the, the beauty of a lady is symbolic of dunya desires. So in, in dream interpretation, if you see yourself being chased by a beautiful woman, it means dunya is coming after you, be careful. Until you can defeat and protect yourself enough until it becomes an old hag, look almost like a witch in which the desire for that servant, their dunya has dropped. So in the dream interpretations it's the same understanding that because Allah describes the allurement, means everything is, is beautified and is alluring for you, come for I'll intoxicate you. And Sayyidina Yusuf understood this is a big danger and asking, Ya Rabbi save me and help me and Allah to save him had to show him a sign so that he would recalibrate himself and run. And they say that Sayyidina Jibreel appeared to Sayyidina Yusuf as a warning that, watch out, you lose your prophethood if what you, you commit the zina against the king. Immediately retreated, ran for the door and his shirt was torn. Then described to the king, it was not me, it was her, her chasing, look the back of my shirt is torn, not the front of my shirt. I was retreating and then was saved from that difficulty. And then after that difficulty another incident in which again the dunya came and said that, look I'll bring some other friends from dunya to entice you. And if you disagree with me, I will imprison you, that you're bound to this desire. And Sayyidina Yusuf then gave the dialogue that, I believe jail is better for me than what these people have planned. <clears throat> Mm. <clears throat>
means that when we come to the tariqah and the immense bounty of tariqahs and a spiritual path has so many openings, so many blessings and they don't stop. And these blessings come, these blessings come, these blessings come and the first time you were thrown into it means you didn't have a choice, you ended up with the turuqs. But Sayyidina Yusuf gives us now a precedent in this that at this time, Ya Rabbi, I think I need to be isolated. This, this too much attraction, too many things are attracted to my reality, I think jail is better for me. Means now he's saying that now you have to make an intention for your seclusion. Allah put you into that was not your choice. But now when the barakah dresses you in life, you have to make a conscious effort to fight dunya desire. And in your conscious effort you have to keep asking Allah that seclusion is better for me, Ya Rabbi. Means grant me to train in my seclusion. And because people are busy now, dunya is busy now, how do they seclude themselves? It's very easy that they come home from Asr or after Maghrib when everything is calm and quiet, they sit and meditate. And they contemplate and they try to make the connection in their heart, try to make the fires and the lights to reach to them. Say, Ya Rabbi the allurement because everybody can understand this now, the allurement of dunya is immensely powerful and it's coming to you every second on TikTok and every second on, on Instagram and now all the children are sickened by it, they have fear of missing out. They have unrealistic expectations of the world. Nobody wants to get a job, they want to be a YouTube influencer. And that's not going to happen because it's less than 1% of 1% of people. But what it did was to completely destroy the hearts of people. So now more than ever dunya is significantly dangerous and that her charm is so immense. And that her magic and, and power is so powerful, destroying the hearts and minds of people. And what Sayyidina Yusuf's qissa is teaching to us, you have to ask Allah that, I need to retreat Ya Rabbi, I need to find a sanctuary in which I can meditate and contemplate and I need a fayiz and madad to support me Ya Rabbi. Because these were the words of Sayyidina Yusuf that what you have blessed me, dressed me, what you gave me of knowledges of interpretation means, Ya Rabbi that I don't want to lose all these things because of dunya. I'm asking please that, that grant me a seclusion, grant me an ability to isolate because nobody can go to jail and this is not a jail that anybody wants to, to be in but to incarcerate oneself means that I want to lock myself away from people so that to spend time with my Lord, to connect with that light and to connect with that energy, to connect with that blessings. And seven years of struggling in that way until the Malik, means again these are all the sharats from the Malik. The Malik is the one saying that you, you need to spend some time, you're going to be in trouble. And as a result only the Malik's a sharat that you're now ready, that this time that you have isolated, this time that you have connected and, and brought to your heart, brought these lights to your heart, you're ready to inherit. And we talked today with some of the gentlemen that the inheritance is so immense that it can't be understood. وَلَكَلْ كَرَامْنَا بَنِي Adam that Allah is saying that we have honoured Adam and Eve, the children of Adam and Eve. Because we don't understand the vastness of Allah we can have no way to understand what that honour is. People only understand through material the vastness of the universes and creations and beyond creations of what Allah has created 
its vastness and then Allah gives to you the title, wa laka karamna bani adam, we have honoured you. As what? As an inheritor of these kingdoms. That when Malik al-Aziz found sincerity in Sayyidina Yusuf he granted to him the keys, the keys to the kingdom, that I'll make you in charge of our kingdom, its rizq and its sustenance. Means what? That there's an immense barakah in the tariqah. But if that comes to you without training, you'll be lost in it. You take the money and run, nobody will see you again. But Allah says, it doesn't work that way, serve your time, prove that you're sincere, struggle through your sincerity. For when they do open, they open with the keys of the kingdom and the kingdom is huge. The kingdom is huge in its immensity, has no limit to it, that from a well and a slave Sayyidina Yusuf entire ministry of Egypt was under his command, all its financial, all of its rizq and sustenance and its disbursements. This was material and again the abbreviated version, then he called upon his father, called upon his brothers and as they came to greet him and understand the interpretation of the dream of that you would inherit the sun and the moon and eleven planets. And when they saw Sayyidina Yusuf of what he had inherited but more he's a Prophet of Allah and he's looking at another Prophet of Allah and recognize the extent of your testing, you've inherited Allah's kingdom. You are one of the big inheritors of this kingdom. He made sujood and kissed his feet. So when people, these crazy Wahhabi people don't like you even to show a respect to the hands of a shaykh, this is a Prophet of Allah he and his wife they made sujood and kissed the feet of Sayyidina Yusuf Not only the Prophet, his mother too said they went into prostration for the dress and the, the Azimat of what Allah had dressed upon Sayyidina Yusuf They recognized this is an immense station this Prophet has achieved. And he says, now is the day that I understand what your dream, your dream, your dream meant. Not the money of Misr, but Sayyidina Yaqub saw that he's in command of the sun, the moon and eleven planets are under his spiritual authority. Sayyidina Yusuf means that that station is an inheritable station. Allah giving money and to be under the command of rizq and sustenance is very minor. But that's not difficult for Allah But the true gift was the spiritual. The Sayyidina Yaqub understood that you're an inheritor of the sun and the moon. So he said that the sun has a maqam. The moon has a maqam and the eleven planets have a maqam and they're subject to that soul that is governing them which is beyond imagination. And Sayyidina Yusuf was one of those inheritors to give this qasa and to give this understanding, to give this immensity of light and what Allah has put under the authority of the human soul. وَلَكَ كَرَامْنَا بَنِي Adam. Everything is under amr and command of Allah and every command must go to the soul of Prophet and must flow through the soul of these souls of pious souls before angels. Their station is above malaika. Malaika they serve the soul of insan. Means that every command of Allah has to go to the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad and then dispersed from the souls that represent that ocean then to the malaika 
And that's what it meant by Ati Allah wa Ati Rasul. From that ocean of reality then Ulul Amri Minkum to the angels and awliya and everything below that reality. We pray that Allah grant us an understanding and to read Surat Al Yusuf in this holy month to understand that Allah Ya Rabbi that what you want to grant to us by our imitated hajj, by our imitated hijrah because we're imitating, we're moving, we're moving trying to understand all of these rules, all these laws, all these rituals but what they meant on an eternal reality. What does the tawaf eternally mean for us? Safa and Marwa, what is the eternal reality been meant for us? And all of Hajj is Arafah and what is the reality of Arafah eternally for us? Because we use dunya to achieve akhirah, we use the world to achieve the heavenly kingdom. So everything has to be imitated and done in the physical world but you're trying to achieve it through the spiritual realm. We pray that Allah address us and bless us from the immensities of these lights, these nights, this holy month and that to make our hijrah real, to make our soul to achieve what Allah wanted the soul to achieve and our shortcomings and misdoings Allah to forgive us and that's the immensity of the qurban. That wherever the account is falling short the qurban where Allah because Sayyidina Ibrahim fell short of his sacrifice. And then Allah described we gave an immense ransom. Means that this station I want to give to you and the reality of who Sayyidina Ismail is, I'm accepting it with an immense ransom of the qurban. That the reality of that qurban and how it takes away all of our deficiencies, all of what we could not achieve for that year, Allah is the greatest of those to keep hisab and takes the negative, puts it upon the creature and then writes for the soul of that servant to be in the positive and having achieved Allah's rida and satisfaction inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. You can go to the Nur Muhammad website and you type in Surat Al Yusuf and alhamdulillah there are very detailed articles with the references to Qur'an and hadith and this just a summation inshaAllah for us to get some of the understandings of how Allah has made Surat Al Yusuf as a secret for tariqahs and the way of the turuq. So when people feel that their way is different and why is my life like this? No, Allah gave to everybody, everyone's going to be thrown in a hole because that's the reality. You'll be in a place and a, that you don't understand, why am I there, why am I here, why is my life like this or that? And Allah is describing that's exactly the way it's supposed to be. And then I was lost and then I got found. That way of being found and the guides and shaykhs they are the caravan, they're the caravan that has no despair. They know there's a barakah in everyone they pick up and their job is to retrieve that soul and deliver them to Sayyidina Muhammad and, all, and Prophet's responsibility, nazar is to bring them into the heavenly kingdom and begin the tarbiyah process through the shaykhs and through the trainings and teachings. So alhamdulillah it's immense, immense realities and this is the holy month of the kawthar that Allah to dress us and to bless us with the realities of the kawthar inshaAllah.